Hey, what is going on, everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you all are having a wonderful and fantastic day today, and if not, hopefully you all will have a better tomorrow. So, I wanted us to have a discussion about some things that Ruby Volume 6 really needs. Now, I think this is important to look at because when you think about it, Ruby, with the previous two volumes, has had its issues with several different areas, and I think that these are some things that Ruby Volume 6 really does actually need. So, sit back, relax, hope you all enjoy, and let's go ahead and jump right on into this discussion. Now, looking at what the synopsis for Volume 6 actually is, it has been stated that Team Ruby is obviously going to be traveling to Atlas, that they are going to escort the relic that they got in Volume 5 at the very end to Atlas, because that is the next location, and that is the next relic they are to obtain. So, of course, I don't have a problem with the adventure idea of this, because I think that's a very good thing for the story, and it's something it really needs, and hopefully it'll be played out better than what Volume was but the one thing that does concern me that I hope volume 6 does not fall into is trying to really make the story solely about the relic when I think that this should actually be more about the story because yes the relics are what they're going to try to obtain of course but at this point after so much story driven lore they're trying to throw into things I think that the relics can take a little bit of a backseat now of course I think Everybody can see the fact that the relics are probably going to be explained a little bit here, or at least what they're capable of, because we haven't gotten that information, and since they have one now, it's not going to shock me that we get a little bit of information, but I hope they stick it to a small ounce, that they don't try to overfill this with just a bunch of the ideas of what the relics can do, and I hope they focus more on the plot of trying to get to Atlas as well as the characters along the way. But the next thing I really want us to look at is the Grim, because... Volume 5, the Grim were not really a threat at all. As a matter of fact, the only real thing we saw out of the Grim was the fight with Weiss against the Queen Lancer. Now, I think that's an underrated fight because it really wasn't that bad, but the thing here is, aside from that, there was not really any importance to the Grim whatsoever, and I feel like they need to have more of a focus, and considering that the Grim are actually going to be somewhat of a focus, considering that is what the synopsis gave us, is that the Grim are actually very threatening within their travels to Atlas, this could be a good opportunity to show a more terrifying side to the Grim, or at least kind of add on to what the Nukalabe kind of was, because we did get to see the terror coming from that creature, and if we got to see more Grim that seemed to be more terrifying, I think this would be a good thing, and have really good fights with these, because I think that's something we really need to see with the Grim. But another big important note that I want to throw out there that has to do with fights is this. Team Ruby is finally back together. Now, maybe, I'm not saying it's going to happen, I'm saying maybe this could make the story feel a little bit better since it's not flipping the focus from one character to another. But one of the biggest things I think needs to come out of this is actually seeing Team Ruby actually fight together again as a team. Because we haven't seen this in quite some time since they have been separated for Volumes 4 and some of Volume 5. Considering that we've seen them separated for so long, to see them fight together again would actually be a good thing, and hopefully if it is done well with the animation choreography, we could get to see some good fights. And that is one thing I am really hoping to see, because look at the fight they had with the Elysian 290. That was actually a pretty good fight, and I hope to see some good choreography and a good fight with Team Ruby again. Now, another thing that I think needs to at least be touched up upon, at least talked about, something, some form of mentioning needs to be a little bit about Summer Rose. Now, there's very little information to her, and I think that that is an important thing that really needs to be thrown out here because it has been left a mystery for so long. I think subtle hints should actually be thrown in here, and this is leading me on to another thing that I really want to bring up, and it has to do with Ruby herself. Now, I know I have talked about Ruby a lot, but she needs to have a lot of focus within this volume, because as the main protagonist, there needs to be a focus on Ruby, and this is not just looking at it from, oh hey look, I like Ruby's character, this is the fact that she is the main character, and if they don't put focus on her, well, this is only going to hurt her character that much more, and when looking at it, I think they need to jump a little more into her backstory, considering we have not had much at all, as a matter of fact, Ruby herself, when it comes to her past, it's really one big mystery. I mean, yes, we have an idea of some things, but 
we don't have at least some of the picture here. We don't have a lot really to go by, except for the small little bits we actually do know. And Ruby really does need to have a arc about herself, about her backstory, and especially herself now. And I think that she needs more involvement in the series. And this is not just a thought of mine, but this is something she does really need, because the main character can't sit here and just be thrown around like, hey, I'm here, and then nothing is done. So I think Ruby needs to have more action. I think she does need to have her backstory talked about. And I just think that the character needs more love in general because she's just really been around and she hasn't done anything really important in these past two volumes. And when we look at Ruby, she has a lot of weight to her past. And this is something that really needs to be touched upon. And even if the Silver Eyes are left out again, the big thing is, at least bring up her past, something with her mother, something to this effect, because she needs to at least have a little bit about her past already solved. I mean, not everything has to be thrown out there at once, but at least some part of this needs to be talked about and touched upon, I think, and just give a little love to Ruby's character. Now, looking at it, Adam has a character short. Therefore, Adam is going to be important, more than likely, in this volume. They wouldn't just give him a character short for no reason, and of course, there are some things that have not been touched upon that need to concerning Adam, and this is a good opportunity to really go into his backstory, to go into his point of view towards the racism of the humans and the Faunus. This would obviously be a good way to tell a little bit of his own story, or at least tell us his entire backstory, what it was like for him having to deal with these sort of problems since he is a Faunus. Now, Looking at this, we are definitely going to see a Blake and Adam confrontation again, and I'm fine with that because there needs to really be something more than what happened at the end of Volume 5, and not just this, I think Adam's motivation needs to be changed up. Because I think there were some really bad problems with Adam's whole motivation being the fact that he was really just a crazy, abusive, stalking ex, and I don't think that's that great, really. I expected a lot more out of him myself, personally, and I think that he needs to have more of a motivation. I think that he should be more of just a hate-driven character, a character that just hates everything and just wants to take it out on anything and anybody. I think that would have been a better drive for him, and looking at this, we are going to get more Sienna Khan in the trailer. Now, I must say that's a good thing because what they did to Sienna Khan in Volume 5 was just outright wrong. I mean, I get it, if you're going to kill a character, at least let them have a little bit of time to live if they have been foreshadowed and brought up previously. They need to at least serve something to the plot instead of just be there to die, because that's not really a good thing to do to a character. But it will be good to see Sienna Khan return for a moment in this trailer. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is Blake and Yang, and the issues that Yang has with Blake over the fact of her leaving at the end of Volume 3 after the fall of Beacon. Now, I think what needs to happen here, which would be a good thing, is to see the issues between the two of them. Considering we know that Yang is very upset with Blake, and it makes total sense because obviously Blake ran away and Yang really needed her, and of course during the worst time, that's when Blake decides to leave. Now of course, Blake ran out of fear and she had her own reasons, and I feel like this is going to be something that's going to need to come up. And Yang could obviously just decide to throw that under the bus and just not listen to Blake because she doesn't trust her after what happened. And like I said, this makes total sense. So what I think would be interesting here is if Ilya becomes the voice of reason. Now, the reason why I say Ilya could become the voice of reason is because if you look at Yang, Yang herself, she doesn't know the full story to Blake. And since she doesn't know the entire story to Blake, she may not listen to Blake either, considering that Blake did run away. And Ilya, who has been there somewhat, could at least explain to Yang about Blake's past with the White Fang and with Adam. And considering that she could reveal some of these things to Yang, it'll make Yang think about some things, and Adam is the big conflict right now. And since Adam is the big issue, he has also affected Yang's life too. Now, when you think about this, Yang could actually go through a conflict of thoughts when it comes to Blake and why she ran away due to Adam. And one big thing that I think needs to happen too is if they have a confrontation with Adam, which is more than likely inevitable, here's the thing that could happen, is that 
Yang could fight in a way that she naturally wouldn't because of her fear, because of her PTSD, because of what Adam did to her, and she could have issues fighting or trying to fight. She could even be hesitant due to her issues that she's had because of what Adam has done to her. And, of course, during this whole thing, she won't know what to do, or she'll need something to kind of snap her back into how she used to fight. And now what could happen here is that Yang could probably be snapped back into her senses by Blake, because Blake could do something that could risk her life to save Yang. Yang could probably get in a situation that could possibly get her killed by Adam, and this could lead to Blake actually trying to save her to show that she is actually trying, that she is actually not going to run away this time, and that Yang can trust her, that she's going to try to throw this at her, and this could kind of renew their friendship and their whole working together as teammates. This would be something interesting to actually see. But let me know what you think down below. Do you have any ideas what you think needs to be in Volume 6? Let me know what you think down below. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, hit the video with a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And share this with your friends if you found this informative or useful. Well, anyways, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful and fantastic day today. And remember, if today was not a good day, tomorrow could always be better. Take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And have yourselves a good one out there, everybody.